Hi. So text vectorization is one of the core techniques of natural language processing NLP. And it's also called as converting into bag of words. We will see two te text vectorization techniques, count vectorizer and TF-IDF, term frequency, inverse document frequency vectorizer. So let's start with a, a simple count vectorizer and understand what is actually text vectorization is. So I'm going to simply import pandas and then I have three messages. Let's say these are your uh, simple text messages or WhatsApp messages. The three messages, call you tonight, call me a cab and uh, please call me please. Okay. And as such, I can't do much with these sentences because they are free text, semi-structured or I would say unstructured data. So the process of converting a free text to a structured data is called as text vectorization. Or in fact, we, call, we should call it as vector form is called as text vectorization. So I'm going to use sklearn feature extraction test text sub package and we have a count vectorizer over there. We also have similar packages in your NLTK, which is natural language toolkit, which is a very popular one. We use it for production. Um, let, this is a very simple one. We'll use this. So I'm defining a object convect for the convect riser module and when I say fit what it does it it basically gets the unique words from this text. So if you see that I got the cap call me please tonight you well I missed the A because it's a single letter so it doesn't qualify to be a word All right? and um, it been like kept in an alphabetical order C to like A to Z order. Okay. So when you say fit, it extracts the unique words from all of the messages. And then when you say transform, it actually transforms all of your messages into count vectors. So what do you mean by that? I put it in a data frame format so that you can understand. You can see that the first message, which is call you tonight, has been converted into 010011 with respect to the corresponding uh, words. So the words have actually become column names for you now. So words have become features to be more, more precise. So each word, unique word has become a feature. And when you give a message as an input for the count vectorizer, it transforms the message into counts. So basically the first message call you tonight has call one and you also gets a one and tonight gets the one and rest of the things got get a zero. Take this message, please call me please. So this gets two please, so it's two over here. Me and call one one, rest is zero. So we are converting a messages into text vectors or counts actually. So you can actually label them. Let's say I'm just looking at the sentences manually. I'm saying, okay, the call internet looks like an information and call me cab looks like an order. Please call me looks like a request. So I'm just putting in another um, variable, like another column saying outcome or the label. So basically, um, I have one, two, three, four, five, six input variables or predictors and a target variable. So I have convert, successfully converted a, a text, a free text into a more structured form. This is great, but one of the disadvantage of this is if you have a frequently appearing words, for example, let's say um, a frequently appearing words or is the uh, you know all kind of frequently appearing words what they do is they kind of dominate the model so if you have is and you and all of these words are um, they basically appear in very large counts so you get a big big numbers for this for so they stop dominating the model okay to, to avoid that, we can actually use stop words. So basically stop words are the words which you don't want to actually in your final model, which model will ignore. That's one way. Another way is by using another vectorizer called TF-IDF vectorizer. TF-IDF is term frequency inverse document frequency. What does it mean? Right. So it actually takes the frequency of the word in individual message okay and then it divides it so when you say inverse it divides it with how many documents contain this word okay 
so let's say is is appearing we have 100 messages for example okay and is is appearing in almost all the messages for example in one message it, it actually has let's say appeared two times and then it has 100 so it actually gives a very less number so well the actual tier body of formula also contains a log it's slightly different but the concept is it is self nullifying if a particular word appears in all the documents the effect is nullified because you divide the fre document frequency so that the number becomes really really small right if you take the same three messages what we have done before i applied down uh, tfid of vectorizer you can see that uh, the ones for example if you take call call has appeared in all three of these places call me tonight call you tonight call me a cab and please call me so it appeared in all three of the places okay so when you look at it you, you can literally see that it is uh, it doesn't have one value but it has 0.38 means uh, it appeared this message it appeared once and in all the three documents you have it so it's roughly equivalent to your one by three whereas look at the please please has only appeared uh, in the last message and it appeared twice right so you can see that the please has a higher weightage okay when compared to the call so likewise um, it automatically nullifies the effect of often appearing words in all the documents so the, the the words which appear across all the documents all the documents all the messages for example will not have a higher number it has a very lower numbers and the, and the words which are very unique to a certain messages will get the higher numbers so that the words that matters for us actually will decide the model accuracy of the modeling which is what we are looking at one of the application of it let's say is a text classification so i'm going to use a simple naive based classifier and import spam csv file that's a bunch of emails to be more precise we have 5500 emails and each email has a ham or a spam tag ham means good email spam means spam email right and then i'm simply taking my um, you know emails into x and uh, type into y i'm using the text vectorizer i don't want any english or anything i'm just going to remove it a default text vectorizer and once i do it it basically captures all the unique words in this 5000 emails so we have 5500 emails so apparently we have 8672 unique words in these 5500 emails all right and then just for looking at it how it looks like so i'm just looking at the words between 2000 and 2010 so you have chick chick chicken chiku all this so you know you understand so just just checking i'm transforming it to an array i'm just looking at the shape of it now so if you look at the x variable before x variable only has one column because email is just one column and uh, number of rows were actually 5572 now you look at it actually has 8672 columns so basically every word has become a column and the number of rows remains the same after this it's a simple classification if you have done the classification before we split the training and testing sets and then we fit uh, let's say i'm gonna fit bernoulli bernoulli is actually works better for this model and you see that we almost have an accuracy of 98 percent and most important thing is if you look at it none of your good emails were tagged as spam this is very much required right and this has been automatically achieved so you know that's the benefit of using tfid of it actually values the words which matters most and the words which often appear in all the documents will be given lesser preference i could try other one other things as well let's say gaussian gaussian is not a good one because uh, it requires uh, normally distributed data so you see 143 males good males being tagged as spam multinomial as well but i think banal is good we can also adjust a bit of alpha let's say i put a 0.75 or maybe 0.74 yeah good so you can see that only 21 spam emails were missed 21 spam emails are tagged as good emails 205 spam emails were actually tagged as spam good emails all the 1446 emails were tagged as good email so you're not missing any communication it's a wonderful algorithm actually 
right? Just if you want to really check uh, quickly by typing things by yourself. So I have just typed in some quick message. I put, hey, this works, text, rate, whatever it is. I'm going to transform using the same transformer and I'm looking at the shape. So same vectorizer. So number of columns has become 8,000. Only one email because that's a mail I've typed in over here. I'm predicting it and it says it's a spam. So of course it's a spam. If I try to use a different message, for example, so I'm gonna say, hey, hey, this is Ashok Veda um, trying to explain um, recording a tutorial. Uh, this is an email, right? So I'll say, hey, this is Ashok Veda. Are you available this weekend? Or official email, let's say, big day. Uh, this Friday or this, this Friday for a quick meeting obviously this is not a spam it's a good email so I expect it to say it's a good email and you can say it said it's a ham all right so this tutorial is not about text classification I have recorded another e uh, uh, video on that this is mostly focused on TFIDF and TFIDF does a fantastic job of um, giving more importance to a unique words uh, which is related to individual messages and often appearing words will be diminished in the in, in the numbers thereby model can actually focus on the words which matters hope it makes sense and uh, if you like this video please subscribe to the channel so that uh, when i upload the video you get a notification and if you have any comments drop it on the comments box um, i'll see you in the next video thank you for watching